Welcome to your Odin 2. Today I'm going to show you guys everything you need to know about getting your Odin 2 set up for the very first time. So let's jump in and up our gaming knowledge. What's going on mobile gamers? Today I'm going to be showing you how to set up your Odin 2 for the very first time if you are a beginner because this might be a little bit confusing to some. So, when you turn on your Odin 2, you'll be presented with a screen, with a welcome screen that is, where you can either touch or click the buttons that it says to click, which we're going to do mostly in this tutorial. Now, the first thing we're going to do is click that R1 button, which is at the top there, and now you're going to select your language. Mine is going to be English, but you can select other languages if you'd like, and I'm going to click the R1 button again. Now, this is where we're going to connect to the internet. So... I'm going to click the open WLAN settings. You're going to click this little checkbox here, and then your networks are going to pop up. Now, I'm not going to show you my networks in this video, or my password that is, but I'm going to show you me connecting to them. And then I'm going to click the B button and click next. Now, we're going to select our time zone by clicking open time zone settings. I live in Canada, eh? So I'm going to select Canada. Now I'm going to navigate down to my actual time zone, which is in the Toronto region. I live in Eastern Canada so that my time zone is set up for Google Play because Google Play will detect where you are located. Click B to go back and then click R again. Now this is going to be probably the most confusing part because there's two different launchers here. Now I'm going to select what is called just the default launcher is called AOSP launcher because I'm not going to be using the square default launchers that Odin has provided for multiple different reasons. So we're going to be using just the default Android launcher just to keep it simple. Now click R again. This is your navigation bar style. Now the three button navigation means that there's going to be buttons at the bottom of the screen that will allow you to press and go back. Now we have a home button and a back button on our device which is pretty nice. So we don't really need this that much, but if you like that kind of style, that's all up to your preference. You can try it out, but otherwise you can use a swipe gesture navigation style, which allows you to swipe on the screen to go back, swipe up to go home, and a whole bunch of different features. So I'm going to click next, which is my R1 button, and then I'm going to click complete, which is my start button. Now that was the quickest setup I have ever experienced on a device. Now, the next thing we're going to have to do, we're going to have to go to the Google Play Store and we're going to have to sign into a Google Play account. If you do not have a Google Play account, you can actually set one up by clicking sign in and then going to create account. Now, I do have an account, so I'm going to actually sign into this. Now that you've signed into your account, you'll be presented with the Google Play Store. Now, the reason why we're going to want the Google Play Store is because there's going to be a lot of native Android games that you're going to want to play. And there's also going to be emulators that we're going to be actually installing in separate guides that will be coming for the Odin 2. So this is going to be an entire playlist on how to do that. The next thing I'm going to show you is basically your navigation. As you see, I was able to swipe up, swipe down, and that actually navigates to the most recent application that was open. There's a swipe left and right gesture. So if I go swipe left on the actual device, then it'll go back, it'll go back, but you can also press the back button on here as well. So there's a back button on the bottom right hand side, you click B, or click the back button, not the B, and it'll go back. Now the next thing I'm going to show you guys is you're going to go down to your Odin settings. So you're going to look for Odin settings within your settings cog. So go back to the main page, click settings, then scroll all the way down to Odin settings. This is going to allow you to turn on your joystick colors. And even your side colors. You can turn that off if you want. You can also swipe from the top and click the hotkey that says ambient LED. You can turn them on. You can change the colors to whatever you'd like, which is pretty awesome in my opinion. I like to click it to blue. And I'm going to do my side LEDs as maybe red. I guess you can't actually change alternates, so you just have to use blue. So you can change the, alt the actual brightness of this as well. So if you are sitting in your bedroom or something at nighttime and you don't want it to be too bright, then you can set it down to a little bit of a lower brightness. But if you want to just show it off, 
you can set it to high. Of course, that's probably going to use a lot more battery. So I'm going to use very low settings, just like that. Now, another thing I'm going to show you guys is clicking B again. Your video output. So if you ever want to connect this to a TV, you can actually change what your TV display actually allows you to see. So you got a 60 hertz, 144 hertz, 60 hertz, again, 1080p, USB type C, 1080p for 120 hertz over USB type C, 240 hertz for USB type C as well, which is pretty awesome. This feature right here, which is turn off handheld console screen, will turn off this screen on the device if you are connected to a TV. Now, that being said, if you want your screen to be on, so like if I'm doing a video or something and I want people to see that I'm playing on this device on the bottom right hand corner and I still want to see this screen, you can turn that off. No auto sleep just basically means that the di device won't go to sleep if it's connected to a HDMI port or the USB Type-C. Turn on USB connection notification. So whenever you plug in your USB-C to a computer, a new little no notification will pop up to ask you what you want to do. Show current network speed. That's just going to show your speed of your network at the top right hand side. Right now I'm not downloading anything, so it's not going to show anything. Now the major thing that I'm going to show you right now is your controller style. Your controller style is based off of these buttons right here and your joysticks. And the default is the Odin style. Now, some people might want to change their buttons around if you want to actually open it up and do that. That's all up to your preference. And have the A down here and the B right here and the X right here and the Y right here. So that would be the Xbox style store kind of style. Now, you can change your controller style to none. And that's whatever you want to do, I guess. But I don't think that's really relevant when you have a handheld console like this. L2, R2. This is going to allow you to either have analog, digital, or both. I like to set it to both just so that I don't have to go through the confusion when it comes to certain emulators because some emulators don't recognize the analog triggers for some reason and only recognize digital and vice versa. The M1 and M2 keypad mapping allows you to set it to a different key if you want to. So if you want the home button to be your M1 button, then you can set it to home. If you want it to be your mode button or your app switch button or your back button, then you can do that. But we have a home and back button right here. So maybe you want to set them to like app switch or different mode or just default. It's all up to you. Those are how you set those up. Joystick and calibration. Now you can disable the joysticks if you never want to use them. You can also calibrate them if you think there's anything wrong with them. So if you want to sit there and kind of calibrate them. You can press the calibrate button and then start calibrating them. If you ever think there's an issue with dead zones or anything like that, you can do both. You can check all of your buttons. So we can go like this, check everything, make sure everything's all good and dandy, which it seems like it is. And I'm just going to follow the prompts, click select when I'm done and that's calibrated. So that looks good to me. That looks good to me. That's how you calibrate your joysticks. Analog trigger dead zones. Now, you can change your analog trigger dead zones, which are these right here, to whatever you'd like. Now, I'm just going to leave it alone for now because I think they look fine and I think they're set up fine. Now, on the bottom it says, you can hold down select and the start key for 10 seconds to enter the settings page at any time. That is really convenient. So if we go all the way back to our home, click home again, we hold these two buttons down. It'll open up that menu. So that will open up the menu after 10 seconds. I know it takes a long time. I think it's a little bit faster just to go to the settings, but that's all up to your preference as well. Now, another thing is knowing your fan settings, your performance mode, your Bluetooth settings, your charging separation settings. Charging separation. So charging separation means if we turn this on and we plug this in, all this is going to use is the actual charging block power. 
rather than it sitting there trying to charge while you're playing it, which you don't want it to do. Your fan settings. You can turn your fan on to quiet mode, smart mode, or sport. Now, sport is going to be really, really fast, and that's going to be always running. It's not too loud, unless you're sitting in a really, really quiet room. The only reason why I would suggest to turn sport on is if you have some heavily demanding games and the smart mode is not activating for whatever reason. Now, I haven't played with this device too much yet on any heavily demanding games to know if I need to put it on sport, but from my experience with another device that I own, which is the Red Magic 8S2 or 8S Pro, I always just have it on smart and then it turns on when it needs to. Airplane mode just turns off everything like your Wi-Fi, your Bluetooth, everything that has to do with connecting to any connections. Performance mode, click on it. You'll be able to set your performance either to standard performance and high performance. I set mine to performance on the most part, but when I'm playing games that are high demanding, like maybe Jensen Impact and Nintendo Switch emulation, high performance mode is what I set it to. Now, I'm going to leave it at performance just for now, and that's what I generally leave it as. The rest of these settings, except for the floating icon, which I'll explain to you in a second, don't really need to be configured. I like to put dark mode on, so I'm just going to do dark theme. So that makes it so it's like a black background instead of a white background. This floating icon. Now, what this is, is when you navigate into a game, there's going to be a little floating icon on the right-hand side of your screen that'll pop up and allow you to configure your hot game settings and see your FPS settings, your battery, and everything like that. Now, I don't have any games on this yet to actually be able to do that and show you, but we'll get started with that in the next video. That is about it with setting up the basics of your Odin 2. We're going to jump right in to some heavily demanding emulation first with this device because Nintendo Switch emulation is supposed to be bomb diggity. See you next time. Bye-bye.